How is the volume controlled through HDMI? Our question today comes from Nathan in Cambridge, Ontario, up in Canada Way. I play music from my laptop to my AV receiver via an HDMI cable. <clears throat> I can control the volume from my laptop and also my AV receiver. How is my laptop able to raise and lower volume before it is sent to my receiver? Is the volume being controlled digitally through the operating system? Once the audio is sent to the receiver, is the volume also controlled digitally or is it then converted to analog first and then controlled by the analog domain? Thank you and how does the IRS achieve ear level tweeter directionality? Oh, goodness. <laughs> I missed that part. Well, here we are in the IRS room. Um, so, uh, we'll, we'll start with HDMI and, uh, and see where that goes. So, HDMI is High Definition Multimedia Interface, I think. It's, it's a standard digital transmission method usually used for audio video stuff. We don't use it so much in just pure two-channel audio. Now, we at PS Audio, uh, we do, and we set a industry standard. We, we just came up with a way of using the HDMI interface to put out what's called I squared S. And I squared S is the taken apart digital signal that makes up what we would call SPDIF. Uh, the, the Sony Philips digital interface. So if you have the output, uh, let, let's say your um, CD player has a digital output on the back, that's called a coax or a SPDIF output. And it's just a single RCA connector. <clears throat> that takes all of the uh, clocks and the data in the digital stream, combines them all together into one mush and sends it out. I squared S is the elements of that mush that are within every CD player and in every DAC around and it has uh, multiple clocks and a digital uh, audio stream. And it, it, instead of multiplexing it all together into this single uh, business called SPDIF that, that we use or you know a toss link cable or whatever you're using for your optical uh, you know, your, your digital interface. Um, I squared S is, is all of that stuff before it gets mushed down. And so it's much better to keep that separate. So we use HDMI because it's a great cable and a great connector with many um, pins on it that are all twisted pairs and they're very well shielded. And so we, we created a, a, uh, a two-channel version of the HDMI standard that we offer to any, any manufacturer that wants it, and a lot of them do. But, so I diverge. Um, typically, HDMI has the various digital audio channels, the clocks, and data signals. I think they, use, they, they even have an I2C channel. And um, so the simple answer to your question is when you connect that up, the digital instructions for your volume go through that cable. So you're getting full digital signal all the time going between whatever the two things you were bringing up are. And it isn't until the final bit, let's say it's your receiver, where the volume is actually changing. And that's usually changing digitally inside of a DAC. And it's, it's rare that those kinds of devices would convert it to analog and then uh, digitally um, or, and, and then change the volume, okay? So that's pretty rare. I mean, it, it is done, but 99% of the time it's changing digitally by, by changing the actual numbers of the digital file. Uh, and, and in some cases you're losing resolution when you do that in cheaper DACs like in our DAC, we control it digitally without any resolution loss. And more modern DACs can do that more and more. It's, it's, you have to make the word, instead of however many bits long, it maybe is like 50 bits long now, and then we can change volume without actually wrecking the resolution of it. But so the quick answer is, it's sending a control signal over the HDMI interface that is then controlling whatever the ultimate volume control is, and there it's changing the volume. And that's how your laptop, as well as your AV receiver, can 
control the volume through HDMI uh, using those, those paths, those, those uh, uh, control paths. So the last part of your question was, how does the IRS, which as you know, is a floor-to-ceiling loudspeaker that um, can we, I think we can, uh, let's see here, I'll, I'll, I'll break all the rules of, of video and I'm going to walk over here and I'll grab the, my little camera and we're going to point that sucker up and, and we're going to bring it all the way back here and now you can see, okay, is that, now you can see it, isn't that terrible, that was horrible video making and I don't even know if I'm going to fit into the frame now. Here we are. And, and you can see this long line of tweeters on the IRS, and this is the IRS. I hope I'm even in the frame. <laughs> I don't know. What am I doing? Um, it's just YouTube. So this is called a line source. And all these tweeters are in there. There's 24 on the front and 12 in the back for a total of 36. But we'll just focus on the 24 in the front, okay? These 24 tweeters are all in a line. So how does it, how does it, it sounds like there's only one tweeter. Well, this is because a line source is, a, is the second best way of building a speaker system compared to a point source. But a point source, where everything comes from an infinitely small point of sound, is technically impossible. No one knows how to do that. So if you can't have a point source, and so far no one's figured out how to have a point source, then a line source is the next best thing. And a line source makes a cylindrical waveform that comes out like this. And, this, and, and as it hits you, it, your ear um, is able to construct it into a single driver. I mean, that's, I, I, I don't have the, the time or the bandwidth to go through how a line source um, and its cylindrical waveform from floor to ceiling actually uh, does that, but that's what's happening, and that's, that's why the IRS or any kind of true line source is able to sound like one tweeter, because it's the closest thing we have to a point source. Um, again, I don't, know, I don't even know if I'm in the frame, but hope that worked, and thanks for the question. Talk to you tomorrow.